If you plug something into the mains and switch it on, the electricity is always there. If the batteries go in this remote control, you just take them out and put new batteries in. If your phone runs out of charge, you just plug it in and recharge it. In this video, we're going to look at different ways of generating electricity and we're going to look at the pros and the cons of each of those ways. We're also going to look at storing electricity in things such as batteries and storing energy in kinetic pump storage. I'm DT Mr C and this is Generating and Storing Energy. So how do we generate electricity? I don't know. Right, magnets have a north and a south pole and a magnetic field goes between them. It was discovered a long time ago that if you put a wire in the middle of this magnetic field and either move the wire or you move the magnet, then this would cause electricity to flow if there was a complete circuit, like shown. Right, this example that I've drawn in practice probably wouldn't work because there's only one strand of wire passing through that magnet which wouldn't really generate that much electricity. However, what I've got here is a little dynamo inside there and what you've got is lots and lots of strands of wire all coiled together so that when you turn it round and rotate it fast like that you can see that the LED lights up and that's because this is able to generate more electricity due to the fact there's lots and lots of turns of wire passing through that magnetic field. In this example, it's my hand that's providing the energy by turning the generator to generate the electricity. But it's actually the same principle that's used in quite a lot of power stations as well. Here's a badly drawn pylon with overhead cables. These take the electricity from the power station where it's generated to homes and businesses. This generator is just like the one I showed you in the previous clip that was turning by hand, except it's got more turns of wire and stronger magnets so it can generate far more electricity. Another difference is that instead of turning it by hand, there's something called a turbine that causes the generator to turn. And the turbine is powered by high pressure steam in a similar way to how I blow this wind turbine round. And this steam is created in a boiler simply by burning fuel to heat water up. And the main fuels used are coal oil and gas and also biomass. So, to summarise, step one, is that you burn some kind of fuel, this creates steam. Step two is that the steam causes the turbine to rotate. Step three is the turbine turns the generator. And step four is that the generator generates electricity when it rotates and it's connected to the national grid to send the electricity around the country. Great, isn't it? You just burn some fossil fuels or some biomass, you release greenhouse and other toxic gases into the atmosphere, you've got electricity always when you need it. There's lots of other ways we can generate electricity. We don't just have to burn fuels. For example, there's this wind farm that I drive past every day on my way to work. And there's also solar panels. Here's a small wind power generator that I'm currently making. You can even see the little generator at the back there and it's exactly the same principle as the ones you can see on wind farms, just a bit smaller. But it changes the kinetic energy in the wind to electrical energy in just the same way as the big ones. The big ones on wind farms obviously generate enough electricity to power homes, but I'm going to use mine to recharge batteries that we use in things like remote controls and toys because it'll save us from having to buy new ones which is better for the environment. can't understand why Mrs C thinks I'm a geek. When we studied the power station that uses fuels to burn, like coal, oil, gas, biomass, hopefully remember that the steam comes along, blows the turbine round, that then turns the generator around that generates electricity. It's just the same principle on a wind turbine. Right, so you've got these big blades. These make up the turbine, and this is what rotates when the wind blows. This turbine is connected to a generator. So it's a very similar concept to the power stations that burn fuels to raise steam. But instead of the steam turning the turbine round, <laughs> Billy Wind blows and turns it round instead. So wind turns the turbine, the turbine turns the generator, the generator generates electricity, and this is fed into the national grid on pylons, just like with the other type of power station. Small version of what you might see on the roofs of houses. What I've done is I've also got the wires coming off the back of it connected to my meter. 
so my meter is measuring voltage so hopefully you can see that the solar panel is producing roughly 1.2 1.3 volts of electrical energy what it's doing is it's taking the energy from the sun and converting it into electricity now what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn the solar panel to face the kind of the sun outside in the garden and uh, you can see straight away that the voltage it's producing is more than double it's kind of getting up there for four volts nearly four volts so what it's doing is taking the energy from the sun and it's turning it into electrical energy Right, this isn't going to show up that well because of the way that the LEDs look when they're filming them in broad daylight, but uh, I've got a much bigger solar panel here that my mates lent me and I've connected it to this LED. So when I hold it to the light, you should be able to see the LED lighting up. If I hold it away from the light, the LED goes out. So far, we've looked at three main ways of generating electricity. We've looked at burning fuels, we've looked at using wind power, and we've looked at solar power. Now it's time we started to think about the advantages and the disadvantages of each of those methods. I'm going to fill this table in in a minute, but if you want to have a go yourselves, pause the video now, have a think about these advantages and disadvantages, then unpause it and see what I've got to say. First of all, think about when you burn fuels. When you want to light them, do it any time you want. Is it always windy though? Is it always sunny? Nope. Therefore an advantage of burning fuels is that they are predictable and controllable, meaning that you can do it when you want, and this means you can generate electricity when there is demand for it. And as we've just discussed, it's not always windy, and it's not always sunny. I'm not going to talk you through all of the other disadvantages and advantages, but what I would say is that when the next slide comes on, I suggest you pause it and have a read through them because you do need to know these for your exam. Right, pause it and have a read. Another good tip I can give you for your exam is, if you're asked to give an advantage, for example, of wind power, never say it's cheap. What you need to say is that once the technology and the installation is paid for, then the energy is free. You have to put your answer in context. Right, we need to talk about nuclear power now because nuclear power is responsible for generating a lot of electricity right across the world. There's a lot of similarities with nuclear power and with burning fossil fuels because steam is used to turn turbines that turn generators that generate electricity. The main difference though is that this heat in a nuclear power station comes from a nuclear reaction instead of by burning fuel. Right, so there you have a nuclear reactor. It contains a heavy metal called uranium, not the kind of heavy metal that your teacher listens to. Now, inside the nuclear reactor, this uranium breaks up and it's a process called fission. And this gives out a lot of heat. And this is where nuclear power stations start to look very similar to those other power stations that burn fuels. And this is because the heat that's produced heats up water, that creates steam, the steam turns a turbine, the turbine turns a generator and the electricity is fed into the national grid. And just as with the other types of energy that we've looked at, nuclear power does have advantages and disadvantages. You can read these for yourselves, but a couple of disadvantages that I'd like to emphasise are, firstly, that once a nuclear power station has come to the end of its useful life, it still has a lot of radioactive waste, which is dangerous and hard to get rid of. Also, there is the possibility of having a dangerous nuclear accident. There are a couple of very high-profile ones that happened at Chernobyl and Fukushima. And when nuclear accidents have taken place in the past, uh, it's caused immediate death to people in the vicinity, but it's also polluted the environment for years and years and years. Right, we'll move on to hydroelectric power now, which as the name might suggest means using water to generate electricity. Water is stored in an upper reservoir until it's needed. When it is needed, the valve or tap is opened and it can flow hundreds of feet down the pipe through the turbine and then it's stored again in the lower reservoir. This turbine is connected to, you've guessed it, a generator which generates electricity that is then supplied to the national grid. Hydroelectric is really clean because fuel isn't being burned, but another advantage is it can generate a lot of electricity really quickly due to the large amounts of water that flow quickly down the hillside. 
A disadvantage is that there's only a limited amount of water in the reservoir, which is why it can't be relied on to generate all our power. However, it is used at peak times to supplement the electricity generated by other means. Before we start talking about storing energy, I just wanted to mention tidal power. This is when they build a barrage over a huge river and as the tide comes in and out, huge currents of water turn turbines around to generate electricity. Some of the advantages and disadvantages are very similar to other kinds of renewables. Have a read. Storing energy. Imagine if our phone had to be plugged in just so we could use it. We'd have to connect all these extensions together just so we could take it with us to the shop and the whole world would just be a sea of mains cable. The reason we don't have to do this is because we can store energy in the form of alkaline batteries that contain chemicals and also a lot of devices like mobile phones and laptops and iPads and things like that have got rechargeable batteries built into them. So alkaline batteries are non-rechargeable which basically means they're disposable but they can be recycled. The reason they can't be recharged is because there's an irreversible chemical reaction that takes place inside them to produce electricity. In today's society we use devices like mobile phones, tablets and laptops an awful lot and this is why they need rechargeable batteries, the most common one being something called a lithium ion battery. When the charge runs down on these you can plug them in, electricity flows around them and it reverses that chemical reaction meaning that they can be recharged. And I've put together a comparison of alkaline and rechargeable batteries for you so I suggest you pause it and have a read. This diagram shows something called kinetic pumped storage. At first glance it looks just the same as hydroelectric power. It is very similar. But the important thing to remember with kinetic pumped storage is that it's actually storing electricity that's already been generated. Quite often at night time, when less energy is needed because most people are in bed, too much electricity is generated and this surplus electricity is used to power that pump that pumps the water back up to the top reservoir from the lower reservoir. Therefore, this energy that's already been generated is stored in the form of the water in the upper reservoir and that can be released again to generate more electricity at peak times. In your exam, it's really important for you to understand why it is we're using far less fossil fuels nowadays to generate electricity, but instead we're using far more renewables. The thing about fossil fuels is they are really bad for the environment in a number of ways, mainly because they pollute with things like carbon dioxide, which causes global warming, but also they're running out. Whereas renewables such as wind power, solar power, etc., are renewable, which means they won't run out and that they are far cleaner. In 1970, this country used 58 million tonnes of coal to generate electricity. By 2012, that had fallen to 3 million tonnes, but that still equated to about 38% of our electricity generation. We're now moving to a position in 2020 where we're hardly going to be relying on coal at all. And moving forward, the challenge is try and get more renewables in and travel with electric cars. Stick around for the song at the end because I've summarised some of the key points again. I've been DT Mr C and this has been Generating and Storing Energy. Fossil fuels have ill repute. This is because they pollute. Renewables don't. And they won't run out. But they're not always reliable. Therefore lights could go out. Electricity is made. When a generator rotates, except in solar panels, when a photovoltaic cell generates, the difference between dirty and clean is that one is turned by renewable and the other by steam. By 2035, hopefully we'll survive using renewable energy and we'll be able to drive electric cars that we charge with electricity generated by clean sources by 2035.